All right, well, um, hello, this is Steven Shepard, and um, this is my presentation on a paper that I read, a research paper by Will Windsor, and it is just basically looking at problem solving skills in, um, in math students. And so I title it Making Harder to Make Math Easier. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to be doing this um, through Camtasia. I'm also using um, my bamboo um, tablet, so if there's any stray marks and stuff, just excuse it. It's kind of one of, one of the first real times I've been working with it. So, um, all right. So going to the first slide. Um, this is by Will Windsor. It's kind of a paragraph or just a sentence taken from his paper. Um, and just speaking of problem solving, it says it extends the mathematical thinking of students by encouraging them to interact and engage with the generalities and the relationships inherent in mathematics. Um, one of the big things that turned me on about um, Will Windsor's paper, who's a professor at Griffith University in Australia, is um, he focuses a lot on problem solving and algebraic thinking um, in math students, um, kinder through 12th grade. Um, he has written a lot of papers about it too, so this is just kind of one of the many papers he's written that involves problem solving, but he's a huge proponent on um, math reform, education reform, and just really involving the algebraic thinking, problem solving type mentality in students. He feels that that's a big thing that's missing from today's students and it's hurting them mathematically, that they're not able to um, think longer, and harder, and more efficiently about certain problems. And um, he, he truly believes that it's kind of, it's, you know, stopping them from having a large general idea about the mathematics topic as a whole. And so, um, and something I wholeheartedly agree with in my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 courses, I've had students who are just, you know, if they don't remember the formula or if they don't remember the function or how to use the function, um, they're done. They can't, they'll just skip the problem, they'll, they'll get it wrong, um, and won't really think that hard about it. They won't think about, you know, what do you know about the, type, the topic? What do you know about the problem? Um, which is just, problem solving skills, the, the kids just lack it, and it's something that I truly agree with um, Will Windsor that, you know, this is something that if if we build students with strong algebraic thinking abilities and problem solving skills, um, we're going to see scores raise. You know, it's it, it doesn't make math easier for students, but it makes math more attainable, I think, that they're going to work a little bit harder in um, understanding kind of what's going on. So it's just important. Um, and so... You know, this presentation, it kind of deals with the lesson that um, he came up with one of the questions, but it, I came up with a, a few other questions, but just basically just kind of working with the kids, spending a whole day on just thinking, because a lot of kids, they're really used to just writing down notes and going through um, problems, getting them right or wrong, you know, how'd you get it wrong, whatever, they, and there's not really much, like, creative thinking involved, and so that's something that a lot of the best math students have, a lot of uh, math students who have trouble don't really have that. And so it's it's something I kind of want to foster in everyone. So um, here is a question that um, Will Windsor had in this paper that I want to kind of give, give credit to him for this. But it's just a question that really just fosters thinking. How do you solve this? Um, so the question says, your New Year's resolution is to save enough money to purchase a bike. You purchased uh, to put, or you decide, you decide to put $1 away on the first day of the year, $2 on the second day. $3 on the third day, and 4 on the fourth day, and so on. And so the main question is, how much money will you have after 30 days? And um, what a lot of the students will do is they'll think the solution um, is easy but annoying. Um, what they'll do is, let me go up here, get the pen. Yeah, okay. So what they'll do is they'll just kind of go, okay, well, they'll have um, $1 the first day. Okay, what's going on? There we go. Plus two dollars the second day, plus three dollars, plus four dollars, and so on. All the way to 30 days. So I'll just add one plus two plus three plus four. Um, kind of annoying, definitely inefficient. Um, they'll get the right answer, yes, but it's the way that they solve it that it's um, that we're trying to change or kind of just alter a little bit. I gave this problem to my wife, and um, she is just an average um, math person um, on this earth, and so she gave her a paper, pencil, calculator, and um, it took her about a minute to solve this, just typing everything all into the calculator, 
um, which is about average, okay? Um, so she got the correct answer, and it was good, okay? So um, kids don't really realize that the way they solved it was inefficient until they see this next step. And this is the kind of, this is part of the question that I had on. Um, same basis on the problem, but I asked, all right, so if you had that much on 30 days, how much will you have after 210 days? And I gave my wife this problem right after, and I told her to figure out how much she had after 210 days, and her simple response was no. Um, she just straight up said, no, I'm not doing that. Because she knew how annoying it was in the first go around. Um, she's not going to sit there and add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way to 210. Um, and the students are going to say the exact same thing. They're going to be like, no way, that was that will be way too difficult, or like, I don't care enough to get the problem right, and they'll skip it. And so that's where the kids' problem-solving skills kind of falls, is you know they think of one inefficient way, and if it becomes too long, which a lot of them eventually do, they'll just skip it. And so what I'll do is I'll split my... Um, kids up into groups of four or five ish and I'll give them this problem after the 30 days one and I'll be like okay so I want you to figure out a way to solve this problem not like you did um, on the 30 days problem not adding one plus two plus three plus four and so yes the answer is somewhat important but really the most important thing is how they solved it I want to see if kids can come up with a creative way to solve this and um, that's where the algebraic thinking um, there's a dog barking in the back, sorry. Uh, how algebraic thinking or problem solving skills really help just the learning process and just add um, some overall general comfort with the math topic. And, um, and so, you know, I'll let them think for about 10, 15, even 20 minutes because this is really what it's about to, on this day that I get this lesson. It's just about thinking, thinking outside the box, trying to figure it out. Um, and then eventually I'll go over it with my kids and I'll kind of show them the trick with the 30 day problem, which some of my kids have done, have shown me actually before. Um, so let's say that we have, okay, so let's say we have 27, 28, 29, and 30. Okay, so um, some of my students have shown me this before, so they know it. I don't know really where they learn it from, but. Um, so what we call this, oh my goodness, all right, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, what we call this is the, why is nothing happening? There we go. The rainbow solution, okay? Where the first and last two numbers, if I add them up, one and 30 get me 31, okay? Let me go here. Sorry, I'm holding down. All right, awesome. Then if I add the second and second to last, 2 plus 29 is 31. And if I do the third number and the third to last number, 3 and 28 get me 31. Sorry if the <laughs> writing's terrible. But essentially, you see every single one of these numbers um, when doing the rainbow situation will add up to 31, OK? And so we have to guess, you know, out of 30 days, how many 31s are we going to get? How many pairs of numbers pretty much are there going to be? So 30 days divided by 2 is 15. So we've got 31 times 15. And, you know, and then they can solve that. And they'll be like, whoa, that was pretty quick and easy. And I showed my wife that, and she was blown away. So then um, let's go to the next problem and then be how much money we have after 210 days. So it's pretty much the same thing. And all I have to really do is see what the first and last number will add up to. 1 plus 210 equals 211. Okay. And so the main thing is how many pairs of numbers are there going to be. So essentially we have 210 divided by 2. It's going to get me 105. So I find the answer out by multiplying 211 times 105. Okay, so um, you know that's much easier way. I solved that problem doing it the long way would take honestly probably seven minutes. And then if you make an error in your math or like type one thing wrong in your calculator, you get it wrong and you just start all over again. So it's a much easier way, and just thinking outside the box, setting problems up and stuff like that um, would really help out. So the last problem, and I'll kind of leave them with this, the last 15 
I mean, it's a class or so, but uh, it says October, former Frank is getting ready for his annual pumpkin sale to attract attention. He's going to arrange his pumpkins in triangular display. He put one pumpkin in the first row, three in the second row. I'm going to kind of draw them as I do that. Um, five in the third row, and so on for 20 rows, right? So I'll just draw one more row. Like that. Okay, so for 20 rows, how many total pumpkins does he need? So the kids will be like, okay, well, can we do the rainbow situation on this one? Um, the rainbow solution. And yeah, we start off with one. And on the last row, we have, I don't know. Okay, the last, we know that there's going to be 20 rows. But now the kids have to figure out, well, what increment are we adding up to? Um, or like how much are we adding per row and so on all the way to 20 rows? Because the 20th row will not have 20 pumpkins. So there's another thing that the kids are going to have to talk about and see how do they figure out. And so they can draw it out, but I want to know another way they can think of how many pumpkins are going to be in the 20th row. So again, th that's not the answer, but they're going to need that to know the answer. And so, um, you yeah, know, just questions like this. Just allowing kids where the math isn't necessarily hard. There's always an inefficient way that they can get it, but if they think a little bit harder, they can make it a little bit more efficient and uh, build problem-solving skills. And so... Um, that'll overall help them out in math. So anyway, um, this is my presentation on um, problem solving skills. And um, yeah, it kind of coincides with the paper from Will Winsler, which is a really great read and something I think a lot of math classes, especially algebra, need. So um, thank you for your time.